Yarn, and welcome back to Miniverse, where today we are making a pirate's diorama. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Now, fun story, I actually live in a city where probably the most notorious pirate was ever born and set sail in the seas, Blackbeard. So here in Bristol, England, it's quite cool to think that what is now one of the most creative hubs of the UK once used to be rife with piracy and old sailing ships going through the river each day. So with the ship now built, it's time to build the ocean. So I learned a new technique recently from Scale a Ton. And to start, we are going to tear up some tin foil and scrunch it up as much as we can to make some waves. After scrunching up some tinfoil, we're gonna put the little pieces onto the diorama and glue it onto the base. And this is to try and resemble some of the randomness of the waves in the deep ocean. Now once the diorama is fully coated, we're gonna get a big single piece of tinfoil and place it on top and flatten it to decrease the amount of texture and make the waves appear a bit bigger. Next, we're going to add a layer of Mod Podge to remove some of that texture and make the waves more smooth. Now let's get on to some painting. I'm going to paint this third-rate ship in what I think are British colours, black and yellow. I'm not sure if it's got debunked or not, but it's the colour in Pirates of the Caribbean, and that's canon to me. I must say, painting these ships was probably the most tedious paint job I have ever done, with the yellow needing two to three coats, trying not to get any of the black on the yellow, and then once getting yellow on the black, having to redo that, and then getting black on the yellow again. Anyway, you get the idea. Once the Mod Podge had dried, I then sprayed it white, and that leads us to painting the ocean. To start, we are going to use the diluted dark blue and aim for the deepest parts of the waves and make them the darkest, while also keeping the peaks of the waves the lightest colour. But don't worry, if you get anything wrong, you can always spray more dark blue on later. I'd say it's better to be too dark than too bright. After that, I sprayed gloss varnish, which made me remember I really need to find that mask, as it was not kind on my lungs. Afterwards, I used a really clear blue, either an ink or a contrast would do, I'm not really sure if this actually did anything in the long term, but I'll keep it in here as I did use it. But afterwards, I sprayed more dark blue to add some more contrast to the waves. So instead of spraying another layer of gloss varnish, I decided to brush it on instead. But be warned, this was prone to removing the paint on the peaks of the waves. I thought it kind of looked okay, at least not bad enough to redo at all, uh, but be warned if you don't like the look of this. So on the other ship I tried different base coats for the black sails, as adding different base tones under a contrast paint can have a really cool effect. In this case, not quite what I intended, so I painted all the sails black instead. So after painting all the wooden decks, cannons and anchors, I realised how much easier this would have been if I did this sub-assembly, and I think that's the lesson we'll learn from this diorama. Sub-assembly. Next it was time to paint the flags and cover the last mistakes I had made on the ships. And I even got so excited, I moved my hand out the shot. But look at that! A semi-neat British flag. And there you have it. All that's left to do is glue them onto the base and look at them in all their beauty. So if you like fictional pirates, make sure to like, share and subscribe. I've been Reese, and I'll catch you next time.